Perdic was a Saxon nobleman who first arrived in England in the year 495 AD in Hampshire, which is here. It is unknown when he was born. The earliest mention historians have of him is that he came from the north coast of Germania with his son Cunric and five ships during the Great Migration period after the collapse of the Roman Empire. Or at least the worse in half anyway, writers like to forget that the East kept on plodding along just fine. After landing, the Saxons began to settle the land and fought a series of battles and wars with the Romano-British locals, who didn't like a few boatloads of fighty Saxons coming to live on their land, as has been happening with increasing frequency over the last few decades. And to be honest, I kind of agree with them really. It's worth noting at this point that the Roman legions had left 85 years earlier, deciding that a small-ish cold dab island in the Atlantic isn't worth it anymore. The first of these battles reportedly happened on this very same day Curdic landed, and continued until in 508 a Britonic king named Natanliod was killed in the Battle of Netli, here in the south, with 5,000 of his best mates. Curdic then fought two more battles as more Saxons came to the country in 514 and 519, with unknown results, but given the increasing Saxon influence in that region, and particularly Curdic's own ascendancy, it's likely that he won both of them. 519 was a very important year, as this was the year Curdic assumed total control of the growing Saxon forces and was declared king, creating the kingdom of West Saxons, or Wessex for short, which is much, much easier to say. The wars did not end, however, and Curdic conquered the Isle of Wight in 530, after which he died four years later. Before you take any of my word as gospel though, remember that the historical sources are super limited for this period, with pretty much only the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle giving any account whatsoever, unless you like King Arthur that is. But he was almost certainly, absolutely, probably entirely fictional. Historical consensus though is that Curdic was real, and that the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle was meant as a historic document, although it was first created in Alfred the Great's reign, three and a half centuries later, to help legitimise Wessex's dominance, so his accuracy is under considerable doubt. But we'll get to him. Alternative theories include Curdic already being a part of the Romano-British administrative hierarchy, as suggested by his Celtic sounding name and that of his next few descendants. Uh, I don't know, it sounds plausible. Curdic is hugely historically significant as he was the founding king of Wessex, and thus almost all kings of Wessex, and subsequently England thereafter, and then the UK, can in some way trace their lineage back to him directly. 